staining and finishing process, you'll need a FlexiSand buffer with 16 inch drive plate, 16 inch bone and conditioning pads, 16 inch carpet circles and terry cloth bonnets, terry cloth rags, chip brushes, nitrile gloves, mineral spirits, stir sticks, your bone of stain, small plastic mix containers, some water, an oily waste disposal can or five gallon bucket, safety glasses, and an organic respirator. 80% of finish issues are caused by stain that's not dry enough to coat, usually in the seams and soft grain. Understanding the proper application rate, as well as the recommended tools and methods used to apply stain, and how to help your stain dry, are key to preventing stain and finish issues. Remember, we're only trying to stain the very top of the boards, and you don't need much stain to do that. Place box fans at entry points blowing directly across the floor. Additional airflow will help the stain to dry and cure thoroughly, minimizing long-term adhesion issues that may occur. Protect trim and transition areas from stain by covering with blue painter's tape. Finally, if necessary, vacuum and dry tack the floor to remove any residual dust and debris. We always want to make sure the customer is getting exactly what they want, so helping them choose the right stain color is an important step. There are a number of ways to help your customer decide on a stain color. One of the best ways is to show them pre-made stain samples on the same wood species as their floor. A more hands-on approach might be to apply a few different stain colors on a small area of their floor, possibly next to cabinets or other focal points and viewed under their normal lighting. We know there are a number of ways to apply stain, but we highly recommend the buffer method. This method reduces excess stain that can flow down between seams and into the soft grain. The efficiency of this technique also minimizes waste and doubles your application rate. Plus, you're upright and not down on your hands and knees. Remove the dust skirt from the buffer and attach the 16-inch round drive plate with a 16-inch bone conditioning pad. This pad will drive the carpet pad applicator and prevent stain from soaking through onto the main drive plate. Wearing nitrile gloves, safety glasses, and a respirator, open the stain can and stir until all the settled pigment on the bottom is thoroughly mixed in. You can judge this by looking at any pigment left on the bottom of the stir stick. If you're using multiple cans of stain or mixing custom colors, you may want to mix or batch all the cans together in a larger container to ensure color uniformity over the entire job. Always keep an extra tightly sealed cord of stain for future touch-ups or repairs. Cutting in is the process of applying stain to the sides and detail areas of the room with a rag or brush. Wipe off the stain with a rag after applying, feathering it into the field. Cutting in can be done in sections, several feet ahead of the buffer application, along the edges of the entire room all at once, or even after the buffer application. Feathering the stain is very important because we don't want to leave any hard lines that could be difficult to blend with the buffer or by hand. If you make a mistake while working with Bona Dry Fast Stain, simply wipe it off with some mineral spirits on a clean rag. Pour about one cup of stain into the middle of the carpet circle. Flip it over, place the buffer on top of it, and start buffing about a four foot by eight foot section, working with the grain of the wood. Note that it may take a few passes to achieve your desired color. Blend the filled area into your cut-in edges, keeping a close eye on the soft grain in the field to ensure it matches the soft grain on the edges. When the stain color starts to look thin on the floor, remove the carpet pad applicator and set it aside, carpet side up. Set the buffer on top of the terry cloth bonnet and run back over the section, removing excess stain and continuing to blend. Work the next section using the same method and continue in sections throughout the entire job. When pads or cloths become too saturated with stain, replace them with clean ones. Carpet circles will last about 1,000 to 1,500 square feet and cleaning bonnets can last approximately 2,000 to 3,000 square feet. And remember, proper handling of stain soaked rags or cloths must be observed to avoid stain rag fires.
For sealer application, you'll need a bone -a mop and tack pads, a backpack with crevice and small brush tools, extension poles, a bone -a roller, cut in pads, a fine strainer system, terry cloth rags, bone -a water based sealer, nitrile gloves, an organic respirator, surgical booties, a paint pan or small garbage can, applicator storage, and walk off towels. Prior to sealer application, check the HVAC controls on the job site and turn off all airflow. If this is not an option, make sure you tape off or plug the vents. Also check doors, windows, overhead fans, and any other possible source of airflow. The ideal conditions for applying waterborne sealers and finishes is 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 to 60 percent relative humidity. So try to acclimate the job site environment to these parameters before applying sealer or finish. Place walk-off towels at all entrances and exits to prevent unwanted debris from being tracked onto the floor. Vacuum and dry tack the stain floor to remove any carpet fibers and latent debris from our stain application process. Work the edges first to create a clean zone around the perimeter, then move to the field, maintaining a leading edge with the mop instead of pushing and pulling. Coming up with a plan of attack for sealer and finish application is crucially important on big, complex jobs. But any job of any size will benefit from having a well thought out game plan. Walk the entire floor to identify areas that can be finished and cut off at transition points, such as at bedroom and bathroom doorways, closets, around kitchen islands, and anywhere else that the flooring direction and the room layout will allow. Also determine the best places to start and end the finishing pass, keeping in mind that we don't necessarily want to end at the front door or any other main focal point in the house. It's always best to finish at a garage, back, or side doorway if possible. In this scenario, we'd finish the small bedrooms first, pulling dry lines at the doorways. Then we'd finish the small areas in the kitchen, pulling dry lines in line with the cabinets and the flooring direction. Next comes the master bedroom and hallway, pulling a dry line next to the family room. And finally, we'd complete our application, starting in the entryway, finishing off the kitchen, and working our way out of the family room, exiting out of the garage entrance. Vacuum, then rinse the roller cover with water. Use a clean terry cloth rag to dry it to just damp. Attach it to the roller handle and mount on an extension pole. Repeat this process for the cut-in pad. Keep damp rags handy for cleaning up finished drips or picking debris out of puddles. Always be sure to wear nitrile gloves and safety glasses when working with sealer and finish. We also recommend wearing an OSHA-approved organic vapor cartridge respirator. Yes, even with waterborne products, it's a good idea. Although it isn't necessary to use sealer over bone of stain, we find that sealers can give some added depth and pop to the look of the stain and provides a nice build coat. Thoroughly shake the sealer before use. Next, insert the supplied medium filter into a fine straining material such as pantyhose or a paint strainer and insert this into the jug. Cut off any excess material with a utility knife. Note that a fine filter is rarely needed with Bona Waterborne products, but in keeping with best practices, it's a good idea to use one. Let the sealer sit for 5 to 10 minutes to defoam. Repeat the process for any additional gallons needed for the current coat and stage these across your job. To start your application, pour a 4 to 6 inch wide line of sealer along the starting section, which could be a smaller section or the whole wall depending on your game plan. Cut in against the starting wall and 3 to 4 feet down the sides. Pour out more sealer into a starting puddle and saturate your roller. Keep in mind that the roller applies product heavier than the cut in pad, and if you're not careful the difference could show up in the final product. So, make sure you don't cut in too thin and be sure to roll back over any cut in areas. But careful not to go over any dry lines and touch up with the cut in pad if you do. Start with the roller behind the puddle and pull it towards yourself rolling with the grain. Now reverse direction and push the roller back in the same path, passing your starting point and making sure to use a feathering motion for transition off the floor. 
Start the next pass using the same method, overlapping your last run by about 25%. Continue this method across the section. Add more sealer as needed for the next section. Cut in 4-5 to five more feet down the sides and roll the middle area just like in the previous run. Repeat this method for the entire job, carefully applying the recommended amount of sealer and keeping an eye out for any areas you may have missed. When completing the final section of the floor, it may be necessary to roll across the grain. Although we recommend rolling with the grain whenever possible, a well-practiced contractor can roll directly across the grain without leaving visible marks which is a huge benefit of being an expert with the roller method. This makes the roller an especially important tool when applying sealer or finish on more complex wood patterns, such as parquet floors, inlays, and border work. Finish rolling over larger areas in the field, then use your cut-in pad to complete the job around the exit doorway. Keep a small plastic garbage can or paint tray near the exit doorway so you have somewhere to put the roller cover assembly when you're done with it. If you find that you have too much product at the exit door, Soak up the extra with your cut-in pad and squeegee it into the garbage can or paint tray before you finish feathering out. Store your applicators in airtight containers until you're able to properly clean them out. Back at the shop, clean your application tools thoroughly with water, then squeeze them out until they're just slightly damp. Store them in airtight Ziploc bags or storage canisters, and if you won't be using them for a while, place them in a freezer to prevent mold and mildew. Let the sealer dry until it loses all tackiness, then turn the HVAC airflow back on and place box fans in the doorways to assist in the drying process. Most sealers will dry in about 2-3 to three hours with proper airflow. Bono waterborne sealers and finishes don't need to be abraded between coats for adhesion as long as the next coat is applied within 48 hours. If it's been more than 48 hours, or if you just need to smooth the last application, use a FlexiSand buffer with a backpack and 5 inch diamond discs or a conditioning pad with delta sheets. To abrade between coats, you'll need a FlexiSand buffer with the multi disc attachment, quarter inch intermediate pads, Bona diamond abrasive discs in 180 or 240 grit, a power scrubber, a Bona mop and cleaning pads and a backpack with floor tools. First mount the dust skirt, multi-disc with quarter inch intermediate pads, and diamond discs on the buffer. We're using 180 grit here. Connect the backpack and begin buffing the floor, moving with the grain as much as possible. Move quickly to evenly abrade the entire floor surface. It's better to abrade twice quickly rather than once too slow. Take extra care not to heal the buffer as you might burn through the sealer and stain. Abrade the edges of the floor and detail areas by hand with the same grid abrasive on a hand block or on the bottom of a bona mop base. Depending on the wood species, grade, grain patterns, and the general condition of the floor, rather than tacking over and over again to clean after abrading between coats, it's often faster and a lot more effective to use a bona power scrubber. After the field has been cleaned, simply hit the edges and detail areas with a backpack and 14 inch floor brush, round brush, and crevice tool. A quick damp tack with a bone mop and cleaning pad should clean any remaining residue just fine. Remember, because we don't have to abrade bone and waterborne sealers and finishes between coats for adhesion, it's a huge time saver and money maker if we can simply come in, give the previous coat a quick damp tacking, and apply the next coat right away. So get that floor clean and keep it clean before coating. For finish application, you'll need a bone mop and microfiber tacking pads, extension poles, a roller, cut-in pads, a fine strainer system, terry cloth rags, your bone waterborne finish with hardener or crosslinker if needed. Nitrile gloves, an OSHA approved organic respirator, safety glasses, surgical booties, a paint pan or a small garbage can, applicator storage, and walk off towels. 
Before applying finish, recheck the HVAC controls. Adjust the environment as needed and cut off all airflow. Place walk-off towels at all entrances, then dry tack if necessary to remove any latent debris using a bone mop and cut pile tacking pad. Walk the floor and determine your application game plan. It could differ from that of your previous application. Make sure to use a different roller cover than the one used for sealer application. Vacuum it and rinse it with water, then dry it almost all the way, leaving it just slightly damp. Attach it to the roller handle and mount to the extension pole. Repeat this process for your cut-in pad. Whenever you work with finish, be sure to wear nitrile gloves, safety glasses, and an organic respirator. Shake the bone of finish for 30 to 45 seconds. Add the hardener or crosslinker and immediately shake the mixture for an additional 30 to 45 seconds. Shaking at different angles and with different motions will ensure a better mix. Insert the provided medium strainer into a fine filter system such as pantyhose or a paint strainer and insert into jug. Trim off extra material with a utility knife, replace the cap and let sit for 5 to 10 minutes to defoam. Repeat this process for any additional gallons needed for the coat. Remember to always prepare one gallon of finish completely before moving on to the next one. Replace the caps on any extra gallons and stage them around the job. When rolling finish, working in sections is helpful to maintain complete control of the job site. Using this method, a single craftsman can tackle almost any size job himself if necessary. Start by pouring a 4 to 6 inch wide line of finish along the section of wall where you'd like to start. Cut in along the starting wall section and 3 to 4 feet up the sides of the section, pulling a dry line where needed. Then roll your cut in areas and the middle of your section. Another method for a successful roller application might be called the spread then feather technique. Pour a line of finish down your transition line and cut in down the sides of the section, usually 3 to 4 feet. Spread out the finish by sliding the roller behind the puddle, pulling it toward you. Roll back along the same path, sliding the roller behind the next section. Work all the way down the line of finish to the far side. Work your way back across that section, feathering out each path. Once the whole section is feathered out, pour another line of finish on your transition line and cut in to start the next section. Let the finish dry until it loses all tackiness. Then turn the HVAC airflow back on and place box fans in the doorways to assist in the drying process. Most Bona waterborne finishes will dry in two to four hours. For the second coat of finish, or any successive coats needed, use the same techniques you use for the first coat. Correctly preparing your job site, cleaning your application tools, allowing sufficient dry time, and using all the best practices we've outlined for you in this video series. After you've cleaned up and you're ready to leave the job site, always remember to educate your customer on dry and cure times, as well as the best ways to take care of their new wood floor. Here are the main points you want to make sure to touch on with every new floor owner. Dry and cure times. This include times before light foot traffic and normal foot traffic can resume, and how long to wait before using rugs or doing any wet maintenance. Protective measures that should be used, such as felt pads on furniture legs and mats placed at entrances and exits. Proper use of bone mops and cleaners. Deep clean service, which you can offer them on a regular basis. And finally, recoating services, and how to identify when they're needed. Well, that wraps it up for the Bona Sand and Finish video training series. At Bona, we want every contractor that uses our products to deliver the most beautiful wood floors possible, and to be professionally successful in doing so. It's our intention that this video series will help you do just that. Remember that the Bona training team is available for you if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for watching, and good luck.